Hi, this is Kurt at Traverse Toll Company. Today we're going to talk about countersinks and we're going to answer some questions that you may have had. When it comes to using a countersink, how do you know if you're supposed to use a 90 degree or an 82 degree countersink? I have four holes here. Two of them are eight millimeter holes and two of them are quarter inch holes. 90 degree countersink is for metric screws. So in this case, it's for the eight millimeter and the 82 degrees is for standard screws. So in this case, the quarter inch. Here's a quarter inch hole with a 90 degree countersink. So that's the wrong countersink on this hole. When I put the screw in there, if you can see, only the bottom of the head is touching the, uh, the workpiece. The top of the head, trying to hold it still, there we go. So the top of the head is not even touching the workpiece at all, only the bottom. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the metric screw, and you can see that only the top of the head is touching the workpiece, and the bottom is not. Now I'll move the same things over here, same screws. Here's the correct size. Let me get my hand out of the way again. Here's the correct size. You can see you have head contact all the way from the, from the screw thread to the outside of the head. And same thing with the quarter inch screw. The 82 degree countersink gives excellent contact to the quarter inch screw. So what's the big deal? It's only eight degrees. What's the difference? The difference is when you put a metric screw in an 82 degree countersink, it's going to come loose because of the fact that you only have a very small area that the head is in contact with a workpiece. Over time, it's going to very easily come loose on you. So um, it's pretty important if you don't want your screws to come loose, um, pretty important to use the right countersink. We talked about what angle is the right angle to use. So what about the size? Here we're working with a quarter 20 screw, um, obviously a flat head screw. If you measure the biggest diameter of the head, you're gonna come up with something a little less than a half inch. So we used a half inch countersink. However, don't let someone tell you that the half inch countersink is the only size that you can use for that because as you saw, we did just fine with a three quarter inch countersink and we have the same result with both countersinks. So all you need is the size of the head or larger in order to do the job. How do you know how many flutes to get in your countersink? Here's one that's actually a zero flute. We have a one flute here and up to six flutes. So just a general rule of thumb, more is for harder materials, fewer is for softer materials, unless it's specifically made for something specific. Something worth mentioning here is for these two, a one flute and a zero flute, you really want to have the workpiece and the countersink secured in a machine. The reason is the point on these two is eccentric. It's a little bit off center because of the fact that only one cutting edge is doing the cutting. So that has to have clearance behind it. In order to do that, the cutter has to be off center a little bit. So if you do it by hand, it's going to wobble a little bit in the workpiece. It'll still kind of work okay, but it's best to have it secured in a machine. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. For more videos, check out our YouTube channel.